Hello everybody and welcome to Ship Analysis. In this series of videos I'll be taking you through everything you need to know about the new purchasable ships in Space Engineers. All ships are vanilla and can be found in trading stations in the game. These stations will only appear if you have the economy option enabled in your world. If you're feeling generous, please like and subscribe, and as always, enjoy. Today we'll be looking at one of the best looking ships in the game, the Blue Ambassador. You can pick this ship up in Economy Worlds for around 175 million space credits. Chances are you've already seen this ship, as it's featured in the thumbnail for the first jump story scenario in the game. However, there are some differences between the three available specifications of the Blue Ambassador. I'll be going over these differences later on in the video. The Blue Ambassador is likely the ship's nickname. I think it resembles a TT series ship and probably has a TT something designation. But of course, we all know it as the Blue Ambassador, or in this case, the Blue Ambassador Explorer. Visually, I absolutely love this ship. It has a very classic spaceship look with dedicated sections. For instance, the forward bow is bulbous and has the appearance of bulkhead reinforcements along the body, which would make sense as the interior is pressurised. The stern is engine focused, with two main large hydrogen thrusters along with the fuel tanks and power generation. Various aerodynamic fins are also present on the design, giving it a streamlined look. There are three versions of the Blue Ambassador to be found. The first is the Ambassador from Aragath's workshop, which is sold as a research vessel. The second is from the campaign. You start inside the ship where it delivers you to the ill-fated station. And finally, the Blue Ambassador Explorer, which appears in construction faction stations in economy survival worlds. For power generation, the Blue Ambassador Explorer has five small uranium reactors, located at the stern of the ship between the living quarters. The ship has two batteries for storing extra power, which are also located in the stern and can be accessed from the sleeping quarters. In terms of production, the ship has a basic refinery and a full-sized assembler. The refinery is hidden beneath a half-built catwalk as you enter the engine room. The assembler is visible on the ventral side of the ship, above the antenna. For fuel and atmosphere, the ship has two large hydrogen tanks and one oxygen tank. The hydrogen tanks are located on the ventral side of either wing, and the oxygen tank is also on the ventral side, connected to the assembler. For cargo storage, the Blue Ambassador has one small and one large cargo container. The large container is exposed between the large hydrogen tanks on the ventral side. The small container can be accessed from the living quarters inside the ship. Orientation is controlled by a single gyroscope, exposed on the dorsal stern. Propulsion consists of a hydrogen ion hybrid system, in total, there are 30 ion thrusters, 14 hydrogen thrusters, and 2 large hydrogen thrusters. The ship also has a jump drive for long distance trips, exposed on the dorsal stern. One connector is located on the stern, which can be used to dock to stations, be it a little awkwardly as you can't exit the ship anywhere near it. Two parachutes are present, one on the stern above the connector, the other on the dorsal bow. The only entrance into the Blue Ambassador is through the front hangar doors. The hangar is pressurised and the vent inside can be controlled via two control panels. Heading up the ladders and through the door will put you into a large airlock with a couple of viewports on either side. Heading further down the ship will lead you into the reactor room and crew quarters. In here you have beds, showers and access to some of the ship's main systems. Back through and up towards the bow leads you into an open room containing the medical station, some seats, and viewing ports on either side. Going through the final door will lead you into the bridge. Here you have the flight seat, co-pilot seat, and a programmable lock. As the name suggests, the ship is designed for exploration, also clear from its large bridge, large forward engines, jump drive, and self-sustaining capabilities. Carrying a small trading ship, such as the Mini Merchant, could also be a good idea, 
as it lets you profit off any goods you come across while exploring. You could add some interior turrets for point defence, however you will be able to outrun almost anything you come across. Due to its planetary capabilities, it could also be used as an oversized shuttle. If you're looking for a well-equipped, speedy exploration craft, then I can recommend the Blue Ambassador Explorer. Its great looking hull and design offers many potential modification options and a solid foundation on which to build.